G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Friday sort of afternoon here in Australia and the market has taken a bit of a tumble again. Having a little bit of a price, you know, kind of recovery here but I fear that it's not going to last long as we got the weekend here and some very, very uh, interesting sort of things that I'm seeing on the charts and a couple of interesting stories. And we'll get on to that but look again, the market cap is under $1.5 trillion dollars. It'd be nice if we could stay above there, but at the moment, again, just a lot of sort of chop soaring action, particularly around kind of Bitcoin, uh, and that's really affecting, you know, the altcoins, you know, they're up one minute and then they're down the next and all over the place. Hence why I've said just be very, very careful. If you're buying for long term, then again, you know, the, the price action shouldn't worry you, but if, you know, you're trying to get in and you're not going to be able to handle maybe a, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 plus uh, percent correction in the maybe not too distant future, then, you know, yeah, maybe steer clear of the altcoins. But again, I'm not offering you financial advice. It's just personal opinion. Volume, uh, you know, not so great, not so bad. Bitcoin dominance, again, still under 44%. ETH dominance, 17%. And GUI, 22 Not the cheapest we've seen, but, you know, nowhere near the most expensive we've seen. Alright, so as we can see the market, it's a bit of a mixed bag. There's sort of, you know, bits of red here, bits of green there. And it literally changes from day to day. Well, of course, that's what markets do. But, you know, pretty volatile in the cryptocurrency world at the moment. So let's have a look. 24 hours. What's done well or has anything done well considering the market is down? Titan swap, all right, uh, on a bit of a tear, zero X doing all right there. Uh, so we can see, look, there's a few coins that have done all right. Uh, Adam, there we go, making a bit of move. But I mean, you can see they are just kind of chopping all over the place. And even when you do make these kind of gains, look what happens here. And with the weekend coming, I think it's quite possible that we're going to fall off again. So, you know, the gains are, are pretty minimal, but that'd be too, that's to be expected considering the overall market cap is down. So what about losses then? We can see one coin's done really well. A couple of other coins have done not too bad. Terra Luna doing all right. But again, even that's chop soaring. But a general upswing in these last couple of days. But as I just said, I fear that when the weekend comes, this is going to fall over. So what about what hasn't done well then? Oof, there we go. Flow, there was a story about that and they had some kind of uh, issues and it looks like a lot of people will probably be uh, looking to, you know, sort of cash out. Not completely of it, but things aren't looking great for Flow. Uh, I should have had their story in there. But anyway, they've seen a bit of a pullback already. Whether it's going to continue further, we'll wait and see. Decentraland, I mean, you know, again, down 20%. Engine Coin, Ecomi. You know, chilies, all these coins. Again, they might be up for a while, but then they just get smashed uh, pretty quickly. And look, Solana, again, kind of chop soaring all over the place. So very turbulent times in the market. Now, what I wanted to do is we'll have a look at the Bitcoin chart, and then we'll have a look at how certain coins have been performing over the last sort of period of time to get a gauge of where we are. So right, here's the Bitcoin chart and I've chucked on the Bollinger Bands because what you find with the Bollinger Bands is it's got this midline. And if something is sitting at the midline, then it's not oversold and it's overbought or overbought. If it gets to the top of the Bollinger Band, generally they're kind of overbought and when they get down to the, the bottom, they're generally oversold. So again, it, it's a lagging indicator. It's not telling you what's coming. It's what it's telling you what's currently happening at the moment. Now, what you generally find, though, is when the Bollinger Bands get pretty close together, like we can see over here, and there's not a lot of volatility, you generally get a pretty big move. Bang, violent move. And then it got up to the top, and then whew, we went way down here. So what we can see at the moment is the Bollinger Bands are getting quite close together. Usually when that happens, it means some big volatility is coming. But just because it's to the up or the downside doesn't mean it can't, that it has to go the other way. So if this got real skinny and this got to the top, that doesn't mean it has to break to the downside. It can break to the upside. There's no real indicator that's, excuse me, telling you exactly what's going to happen. But we can see the Bollinger Bands, there's been, like I said, less and less volatility. And so they're getting real close. Here's the bottom of the Bollinger Band. Here's the top of the Bollinger Band. Not a lot is going on. So... 
things are I think they're at a tipping point at the moment to be honest we could travel sideways for longer it's possible but I just get the feeling like something big is coming now again the RSI we could see we're in this sort of you know bearish downtrend then we had this bullish divergence it's been getting higher and higher and we can see I was just looking at this the other day so right here I'll get this out the way it looked like it was going to break but it came down and it bounced off it and so far it's holding we can see we got a little bit of a green candle here but again the weekend's coming this could be not great generally there's sell-offs over the weekend at some stage and that's where you're going to kind of see your peak low so we can see same thing on the MACD we had all these crossovers where it just kept getting bearish and bearish but then we've had some bullish divergence. So bullish, it got up, it crossed over for a brief second and then started to go up again. Now we can see again just here, I'll move this out the way, but it looks like it might cross over, but then it's just kind of holding. So will this hold tight and continue to the upside? That's what we're really all sort of looking for. And look, really, this is what everyone's going off. So the Wyckoff, we can see that it's been following it to a T at the moment. But my issue with it kind of following it to a T, and not it's not exact, but it's thereabouts, is that the big people, the big players know this. And so, you know, everyone is expecting for it to kind of hold this kind of 30-ish thousand dollar level and then break to the upside. Look, fingers crossed that's exactly what's happened because it played out exact with the Wyckoff distribution, and that was kind of known for a little while. So now will the Wyckoff accumulation also play out the same? Because what we need to remember is these big players, they can only push it down so far before it's not really worth it, you know them trying to push it down any further. Other than some you know big Bitcoin whales who obviously bought way back in the day when you know they were probably only a couple of hundred dollars or literally only a couple of dollars they can absolutely afford to try and push it down. But even they would be seeing at the moment that every time Bitcoin gets down to the $30,000 level, it's being bought up quite heavily. It would take a lot, a lot, a lot of pressure to try and push it down. And I'm just not sure they want to do that because I think their game is to try and accumulate more Bitcoin. And this seems like an accumulation. So even all the on-chain analytics have shown that it looks like whales have been accumulating. So there is a good chance, I wouldn't say a whole lot, but I'd say there's a good chance that they will then let it, let it ride. Because again, to push it down just means they got to sell too much. And if it doesn't work, then they've sold off a whole lot of Bitcoin for a price that they probably didn't really want to. So hopefully this means we do start to see the next upside. But we just need to keep in mind that again, a lot of people kind of know about this at the moment. So they may try and counter trade that and again, play against everyone who's going to jump in at this point and try and go long and then they short it even further. But if it does go down, then this just shows that the Wyckoff, you know, accumulation, uh, you know, was not what was going on. And that could be bad for the market again. You know, we break kind of the $29,000, $28,000 level, look out twenty four, and then, you know, look out $20,000 after that and that will be... That'll be pretty brutal uh, in all fairness and particularly for altcoins, they will get absolutely crushed. But moving on, so let's have a look. All right, the last seven days, how have coins been doing in general? We can see it's a bit of a mixed bag, not too bad. Bitcoin, you know, it's up 15% uh, from where it started a week ago. But again, it has been chop soaring all over the place. Ethereum not doing too bad. BNB, so this is where it's not looking so bad. On the weekly charts, you can see some things have done all right. You know, Uni doing well. <sighs> Ave, there you go, doing well. Terra Luna doing well. You know, Adam, there's a number of coins that look like they're doing all right. We're getting up to some, you know, double digit and even, you know, nearly 20% plus kind of gains. So that all looks great. What about if we move on from seven days though? Well, now things don't look so good. Now we're looking at a month. So, I mean, it's just red. Things are looking truly horrible here over the last month. Terra Luna doing all right. But again, we've got a weekend in the dump coming, most likely. Uh, no guarantees in life. And Leo, but basically everything else is just getting absolutely smashed. I mean, in the top 50, 
very few things have done well. There's been a couple of things that have done, you know, okay. There's always outliers, but generally things are not looking so good. So seven days looks good. Month looks terrible. Now we go to three months. Things look even worse outside of Doge. And again, there's always a couple of kind of movers. Doge has done all right. But again, Bitcoin's down 40%. BNB is down 20%. XRP, you know, 36%. 63% for DOT, 30% for Uni. So again, we need to be very, very careful. The altcoins, oof, Matic, you know, they're lucky over the last, you know, couple of months. They're still up. But, you know, will that last and will that hold? We'll have to wait and see. So, oh, Shiba, good Lord, 13,000%. That is unbelievable. So anyone who bought, you know, Shiba, you know, you know over three months ago uh, is still probably doing pretty well, particularly those who bought maybe six months ago. But again, realistically, most of the other coins, they're not looking real flash. I mean, look, Clay is down 70%. BSV 45%, IOTA, you know, 50%. A lot of projects are down around those kind of 50%. The graph, one of my favorite projects is down 60%. I still like the graph. I haven't given up on the graph, but this just goes to show that things are not looking that great, at least in the long term. In the short term, we've had a nice recovery. Again, the seven days has been not too bad, but now we need to see, can this seven days hold? And again, is this you know really low volatility going to lead to the upside in line with the Wyckoff? If it does, then you know, lucky everyone who's been buying in the last seven days in altcoins and everything, because things are going to explode, and that would be great. But oh, if it doesn't and it turns the other way, and I'm not you know trying to throw out fud and scare people, you just need to keep it in the back of your mind that this is what could happen. But here's what I'll say. So we go back to here. This looks truly horrible over the last three months. But what it's saying to you is if you're buying now, yes, it absolutely could go lower. But if Bitcoin gets back to its old all-time high and you're buying today, you're making, you know, basically double your money nearly. BNB got a long way to go back to its old all-time highs. XRP, a long way to go back to where it was just a few months ago. You're basically buying almost everything at massive discounts. Again, it could definitely go lower, but that's all you need to look at is, all right, yes, it's on its way down, but by the time it gets back to its next all-time high, I have been buying at you know, unbelievable discounts. I mean, Litecoin, oof, 41%. I mean, that got up to, you know, 300, I think something dollars, nearly $400. And now you can pick it up for 130 bucks. I'm not saying run out and buy it, but just things we need to keep in mind. All right, USDC, so Circle. It is a global financial technology firm that provides payments and treasury infrastructure for internet businesses. They are the principal operator of blockchain-based USDC coin, though, and other stuff as well, which has become the fastest growing regulated fully reserved dollar digital currency in the world. So currently USDC is uh, in circulation is greater than 25 billion and has supported over 785 billion 85 billion in on-chain transactions now we've heard that the company is going public in 2021 it says down here the deal uh, places circles new valuation at 4.5 billion with the transaction expected uh, to close in quarter four of 2021 so what we've noticed is that whenever these ipos and things kind of come out it usually marks the top so when uh, Coinbase came out, it pretty much marked the top. So quarter four of uh, 2021, whenever this uh, IPO comes out, chances are that's probably going to mark the top. Now, not exactly to the day, but thereabouts. So what this says to me is that it's likely that there's still more bull run to go, but it's likely going to end in quarter four, which is what I thought anyway. Somewhere around sort of, you know, September to December, somewhere around about there, we're likely to see the peak. Exactly when that is, who knows? And look, there's no guarantees. Just because this comes out then doesn't mean it will be the top, but the last couple of IPOs and things like that that we've had have generally marked a sort of top. So something to keep in mind. 
right? Elizabeth Warren. So this is her. She has called for regulation from the SEC uh, surrounding cryptos and for it to be done by July 28th. So that is not far away at all. I mean, that's basically sort of three weeks away thereabouts. So crypto skeptic US Senator Elizabeth Warren gave the Securities and Exchange Commission until the end of this month to figure out its role in regulating cryptocurrencies. Now there's upside and downside to this. Downside is she really doesn't like crypto. She's been quite uh, negative on it and critical in the past. But the good thing is the quicker we get regulation, the sooner we'll know exactly you know, what the rules are, how we're you know, supposed to play by them and all the rest of it. And then the market can finally get and do its thing. Then it really can go worldwide, mass adopted and all the rest of it. It's not to say that as soon as regulation comes in, that's what happens. But that's where it starts. It can't get mass adoption and you know become this worldwide phenom without the proper regulation. Now again, I just hope it's not over-regulated. But again, this is so there's both good and bad to this. So despite the rising popularity of crypto, a lack of common sense regulation has left ordinary investors at the mercy of manipulators and fraudsters. And this is true, there's been a number of rug pulls and things like that, and we just don't have the regulation in place. At the moment, anyone can make a cryptocurrency. There's uh, software on there that'll basically do it all for you. And no regulation, no nothing. And that is an issue. We need regulation where if someone wants to make a cryptocurrency, they got to, you know, identify who they are, you know, go through all these processes, and that is better for the average, you know, sort of user, and also the big users. But again, we just don't want, you know, this new system to basically, you know, become the old system, because there's a whole lot of problems with the old system. But, you know, again, good and bad sort of, you know, things here, and, you know, maybe the 28th of July, we'll all have a whole lot more clarity, although... Not so much because, I mean, we can go here, Skybridge. So the Securities and Exchange Commission has again delayed another decision on a Bitcoin ETF. And this time uh, it's Skybridge's one. It's been put off till uh, August. You know, we're still waiting on a decision for VanX and that is likely to be sort of put off for a little while. But maybe Elizabeth Warren's calls to, you know, have this sorted within the next three weeks. We'll see a Bitcoin ETF uh, and then, you know, a Ethereum ETF and you know ETPs and all those sort of things finally get sorted and that is likely if we get that that is likely to spark a big move to the upside it's unlikely to spark a move to the downside although it's you know possible just highly unlikely I think clear regulation Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs and all the rest of it you know as they say we're off to the moon after that now, don't get me wrong, it doesn't happen right then and there. It's not like two seconds after it, right? Yeah, Bitcoin goes from $34,000 to $260,000. You know, there's still a whole lot of things for companies that'll, you know, want to come into the space that'll have to do, and it'll be a process, but it will likely start a big, massive push to the upside. So fingers crossed that we can get some, you know, good regulation. And again, the regulation that protects us but doesn't stifle the innovation of this new system System. And I think if we can get that, the sooner rather than later, that will really let us kind of move to the upside. Now, Visa. So, Visa and 50 crypto, crypto platforms to enable cryptocurrency payments at 70 million merchants. This is, you know, this is going to be big because this is obviously worldwide. But again, they still need the regulation and all the rest of it in it. And, and that's what's holding a lot of places back. We saw over in Iran, they were saying, you can invest in cryptocurrencies, but if you want to buy or sell anything, it has to be done in the, the you know, their, I don't know what money they use. Sorry, uh, apologies to anyone in Iran, but you know, their dollar or whatever it is, their local currency. And that I think is likely what's going to happen with a number of these cryptocurrencies. Some are going to be seen as money and others aren't. And I think there's going to be issues that if you want to, you know, spend your Ethereum, let's say, on buying something, it first has to be converted into dollars uh, and then, you know, you get your change and then whatever change you get can be uh, converted back into, you know, again, Ethereum or whatever currency we, you, you were using. And that's the regulation that I think will, you know, save the dollar, save all the kind of monies, is that they will likely force 
any kind of transactions to be done in the local currency, you know, you can still go and it's like you're kind of paying with Bitcoin, but you're not. You swipe your card, your Bitcoin turns into the cash, uh, the transaction gets done, and then, you know, all the taxes and that are paid and it saves the local currencies. I believe that is the kind of regulation that we're going to get. So it says here, Visa Inc. announced Wednesday that the transactions via CryptoLink Visa cards exceeded $1 billion in the first quarter. $1 billion. It shows that the appetite's there. The infrastructure is, you know, getting there. We still need some more scaling stuff, but they're already finding ways around that. So again, super big news. Look, Bank of America, even they've come out. Now, they've been skeptical of cryptocurrencies, and it seems now they're changing their tune. So Bank of America has become the latest major bank to make a foray into the cryptocurrency sector. A foray. According to an internal memo, the bank has created a team dedicated to researching cryptocurrencies. Now, this last part I found pretty funny. Bank of America believes that it is uniquely positioned to provide thought leadership on cryptocurrencies and the technology behind them. I don't think there's any bank out there that can really say that uh, and actually believe it. They're just talking straight out their backsides. Banks have been completely anti-cryptocurrency and all the rest of it, but they see what's coming, the tidal wave, and they simply can't get left behind with these old legacy systems. So that's why they come out and say these kind of things. We believe we're uniquely positioned to provide thought leadership. What a load of crap. You're like every other bank and they have stuck to that walled garden system and they have been completely, you know, devoid of any new technology development and, and wanting to change. But now they're being forced to. Don't get me wrong, I'm not like having a full crack at Bank of America, but it is almost laughable that they come out and say things like this. And the problem is anyone who's not in cryptocurrency will see this and they'll probably be thinking, oh, they've obviously, you know, known about cryptos for a while and kind of been, you know, looking into it. No, they've known about them for a while and completely dissed them and pushed them off. And now they're being forced into having to, you know, adopt this new currency, which is good. Don't get me wrong. But they come out with silly things like this. They're not uniquely positioned at all. They probably wouldn't know hardly anything more about cryptocurrencies than the average user like yourself and myself. And I don't consider myself any expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I do consider myself uh, someone who's fairly up to date with them, not an expert. Again, you know, I'm not a coder or anything like that, but I have a good understanding of sort of how they work, you know, whether they're a social token or a governance token and all those sorts of things. And I don't think Bank of America or any of the other banks would know much more than that kind of uh, information about cryptocurrency. So how they're, you know, uniquely positioned and thought leadership. Yeah, pretty funny. All right. Jack Dorsey confirms that Square is building a Bitcoin hard wallet. So i.e. they're building something like a, a ledger and a trezor and things like that. Now, Jack Dorsey came out not that long ago and said that they were looking into it, but it seems he's now confirmed it. So they are going to build a Bitcoin hardware wallet. So it's basically going to be kind of like a USB stick and you'll be able to make sure that, you know, your currencies are stored, uh, you know, sort of offline so no one could sort of hack them and take them. So it'll be very, very interesting to see what they come up with. Uh, it will be also very interesting to see how it stacks up against things like, again, Ledger and Trezor and all the rest of it. But, you know, the innovation's here. It's happening. If you're here, you are still super early. You need to remember that, you know, 98% of the world is not into crypto yet. 98%. That means the upside is existential unbelievable upside to come but unfortunately it's not going to be just one you know straight ride to the top and not everything's going to make it that's the sad part all right how's this uh for you know an indication of where things are going a hydro plant that was built back in 1897 earns three times as much mining bitcoin as selling power to the grid they could basically stop selling power to the grid almost altogether and just get into Bitcoin and make unbelievable amounts of money. Now, what we need to remember is some of this is likely due to the hash rate at the moment with the other miners closing down uh, and sort of having to move and all the rest of it. So once they start back up, then the profits probably won't be quite so much. 
but then again we need to remember that's price dependent as well if bitcoin starts to moon and you know goes you know, or, you know yeah goes to the moon as they would say then that could easily uh, rise as well but very funny that you know this business that is all about you know making energy and then selling it makes three times as much money simply mining bitcoin you'd almost have to ask yourself why do we even sell the power why don't we just keep it all to ourselves and simply mine bitcoin well a lot of that would be because they simply don't uh have enough bitcoin miners to use all the power so they have to do something with that excess power but very very interesting all right ethereum's london upgrade has been deployed to the final test net and on august 4th it's happening the london hard fork is happening so the long-awaited eip 1559 upgrade is now just 26 days away very very interesting for ethereum again we go back here you know the ethereum gas prices still sort of jump up uh, look 22 is you know really low in comparison to where we've been but we really want single digit gas to be honest i did a i staked the graph and when i was staking it the other day it cost me oh god what was it 40 50 dollars uh to stake it there was the smart contract fee and i thought that can't be right 40 50 dollars and not sure enough that's exactly what it was i think it was 40 dollars 44 dollars something like that i nearly fell over so we definitely need to get get those eth gas prices fixed because again that is one of the major issues is we can't onboard the entire world because ethereum simply cannot handle all the transactions at the moment you know it would need things like polygon and even more arbitrum and zk rollups and zk snarks and you name it all those kind of things that are coming for ethereum that is what's it, what it's going to take to really you know have the the world be able to adopt cryptocurrencies you know there's other platforms that talk about how much better they are solana and you know all sorts of stuff there's a number of other ones out there you know cardano is going to do all this stuff they're all going to do it none of them none of them have actually done it and if they do have a product that's you know either sort of finished or close to finished they just don't have the adoption so that's the issue is ethereum's got the adoption but the tech's not quite there and these other ones you know say they have the tech but they don't really have any adoption so yeah consider yourself a vc when you're buying into any kind of crypto that's essentially what you are you are investing into something before everyone else gets a chance to that's the way i like to think of it and again not so much into a company though because you're not going to get returns all the time from your cryptos although you know you can get the returns from the gains of adoption not all of them are like paying you a dividend and things like that although a lot of them have staking now staking won't last forever though staking will come to an end uh, and then it'll be interesting to see how they all transfer over from there from when there's no more coins to be staked but i mean we're a long long way away from you know most of that happening all right look again the weekend's here just be careful i get the feeling like we're probably going to take another dip and i think bitcoin particularly is going to come down and have a good red hot crack at 30,000 29,000 maybe even 28,000 that's my gut feeling so you know again never financial advice but if you're looking to put some money in i would wait for this weekend and sort of see what happens particularly sort of saturday sort of sunday stateside time uh you know you'll you'll know uh if it's going to happen earlier because you know tomorrow this will suddenly shoot to thirty six thousand, or sort of saturday sunday it's gonna you know again there's no exact time and date it may not happen saturday sunday it could happen friday but if it's going to go low it's probably going to do it fast and i don't think it's going to last there for very long i think it'll get pushed up pretty quick because there's a lot of buy orders down around that kind of thirty thousand dollar mark that's what i'm looking out for and likewise with the altcoins if you see bitcoin at you know sort of thirty thousand dollars twenty eight thousand dollars if that's the spring then whew, that'll be the good time to get onto the altcoins if we are then going to you know rock it up but again if we kind of break that 30,000 and get down into the 28s and that doesn't hold then chances are we're going to 24 and there's not a whole lot of support there there is a bit if that doesn't hold then we're definitely going down to something like probably 20,000 all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another 
pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment, but if you did, congratulations to you. You've, out, you've outplayed the entire market, and I'll see you next time.